You may or may not know that I am originally from Canada. Growing up, I spent all of my free time in the summer months looking for bugs, frogs, and snakes. But I always dreamed of spending time in a tropical jungle, somewhere that I felt would have the really interesting species. As an adult, I got that opportunity, spending over 10 years living in Ecuador and Indonesia, and I've since learned that many of the plants and animals that I thought could only be found closer to the equator actually also have representatives in Canada. Despite the fact that Canada does generally have a colder climate and much lower biodiversity than these tropical countries, I think not enough people, especially Canadians, appreciate the true variety of wildlife found within the country. So this week, we're taking a look at some of the surprising species found in Canada. When you picture a vulture, perhaps you imagine it circling over a desert or a tropical hillside. But Canada has a large population of turkey vultures that migrate to the southern parts of the country each summer, and their numbers are growing. While many people actually frequently see turkey vultures soaring overhead in Canada, most have no idea what they're looking at. What they assume are hawks or eagles are actually Canada's only native vulture species, and they're easily identified from the ground, having bright white flight feathers, small heads, and a distinct soaring movement that involves tipping back and forth. In Canada, turkey vultures breed across much of the southern part of the country, from British Columbia to the Maritimes, and their range is still expanding. The species has been steadily moving northward for decades. Breeding bird survey data shows that their Canadian population has increased dramatically since the 1970s, with an estimated 730,000 vultures breeding in Canada each summer. This expansion has likely been aided by a combination of milder springs and increased food availability from human activity, like roadkill and landfills. By the fall, most of the turkey vultures in Canada head south to warmer parts of the United States or Mexico. But in recent years, a few have been recorded overwintering in mild coastal areas, such as southern Vancouver Island and parts of the Vancouver region. When you picture Canada, you might not think that the country would be home to a species of boa. Most species of these constrictors are found in jungles, deserts, and grasslands much further south. And while the idea of a wild boa species in Canada doesn't seem likely, this boa defies the stereotype. Its loose skin gives it its common name of northern rubber boa. It's a small species, quietly making its home in parts of southern British Columbia in the west, and it holds the title of the most northerly ranging boa species in the world. This smooth-scaled snake reaches only 38 to 70 centimeters in length, with a blunt tail that resembles its head. The tail acts as a decoy, a defense that can confuse predators and prey alike. In Canada, it's restricted to the warmer valleys of the southern parts of British Columbia, where it shelters under logs, rocks, and leaf litter. It's a secretive species, active mostly at night or in the cool hours of the morning or evening. This, combined with their burrowing nature, patchy distribution, and cryptic coloration means that even people who live within their range will likely never see one. And this isn't the only surprising species of snake found in Canada. The country is also home to three species of pit viper, all of them rattlesnakes. The prairie rattlesnake is found in the dry grasslands and river valleys of southeastern Alberta and southwestern Saskatchewan. The western rattlesnake inhabits warm, dry valleys in the southern interior of British Columbia, where it's considered a species at risk. And in Ontario, the small and secretive eastern Massasauga rattlesnake lives in scattered pockets of wetland and prairie in the south of the province. Boas and rattlesnakes may steal the spotlight when people think of Canada's surprising wildlife, but tucked beneath the leaf litter on the forest floor are some smaller, unexpected animals. Mygalomorphs. 
To clarify, the majority of spiders one might encounter, like orb weavers, wolf spiders, and jumping spiders, are what we call true spiders. True spiders have fangs that point towards each other and perform a sort of pinching action when the spider bites. But the mycalomorphs are a lineage that includes tarantulas and trapdoor spiders. Their most distinguishing feature is their vertically oriented fangs. While Canada isn't home to any tarantulas, there are three species of mycalomorphs that have been documented. The Northern Pacific Folding Door Spider is found only in parts of southern British Columbia and up the Pacific coast. In fact, it stretches far enough north that it can even be found in parts of southern Alaska, making it the most northerly species of mycalomorph in North America. Despite its fearsome appearance, it's only about the size of a quarter. The species lives in silk-lined burrows hidden under moss or wood, and by night, it waits at its burrow entrance for unsuspecting insects to pass by. The folding door spider is related to the Northern Pacific folding door spider, but it's far rarer in Canada. It's generally known from the eastern half of the United States, however it has been recorded several times in southernmost Ontario, and with a warming climate, the species may continue to spread further north. And finally, the black purseweb spider lives in southern Ontario from Windsor to Ottawa. This species also barely surpasses one centimeter in length, with a large part of that length being made up of their disproportionately large jaws. Mycalomorphs aren't the only surprising arachnids found in Canada. The country is also home to a single species of scorpion that has managed to carve out a small foothold in the west. The aptly named Northern Scorpion has a range in Canada from the Okanagan Valley in the southern interior of British Columbia to southern Alberta, especially in the province's southern grasslands along major river valleys and badlands terrain, and even in a small part of westernmost Saskatchewan near the town of Leader. Like other species on this list, this is the most northerly naturally occurring species of scorpion in the world. They usually measure between 3 and 6 centimeters and are mostly found under rocks or debris. Like all scorpions, they glow a vivid blue-green under ultraviolet light. Despite the fact that it is venomous, the northern scorpion poses little risk to people. Its sting is strong enough to subdue small invertebrate prey, but is generally no more harmful to humans than a wasp sting. Beyond Canada, the species is widespread across the western United States, from the Great Basin to the Rocky Mountains. The American Southwest and Mexico have about 17 species of horned lizards, reptiles with flattened, spiny bodies that blend perfectly into desert sand and grassy terrain but two species of these unusual reptiles also live in Canada, occupying some of the country's driest and most rugged habitats. The more widespread of the two is the greater shorthorned lizard. In Canada, it occurs in parts of southern Alberta and Saskatchewan, with the greatest concentration being found around Grasslands National Park. It favors dry, open terrain with loose, sandy soils, where it can dig burrows for shelter and nesting. Adults typically measure between 7 and 11 centimeters long, excluding the tail, and they rely heavily on camouflage to avoid predators. Far rarer in Canada is the pygmy shorthorned lizard. It's slightly smaller, with adults averaging just 5 to 7.5 centimeters in body length. In Canada, this species was once found only in the southern interior of British Columbia, around a Soyuz, where summer temperatures can exceed 40 degrees Celsius. But in the last few decades, there have been no confirmed records. It's believed that human development and the use of pesticides in this popular summer destination have led to the extirpation of the species in Canada, with the last confirmed sighting coming from the 1950s. The semi-arid western regions of the country are among the most diverse habitats in Canada, and this doesn't just include animals. 
There are also species of plant found in Canada that one might not expect, including four species of cacti. The most widespread is the brittle prickly pear, which grows in pockets across southern British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba, and even as far east as Ontario. In late summer, it produces bright yellow flowers that seem more at home in the deserts of the American Southwest. The other three, the Eastern Prickly Pear, the Spiny Star, and the Missouri Foxtail Cactus, are more restricted, found mainly in dry grasslands and rocky slopes in the southern prairies, British Columbia's interior, and the warmest parts of southern Ontario. These plants play an important role in the ecosystems that they grow in, providing food and shelter for native wildlife. Prickly pear flowers attract native pollinators, while their fruit is eaten by species like sharp-tailed grouse, deer mice, and pronghorn. Orchids are also found in Canada. In fact, the country is home to over 60 species of wild orchid, with some capable of thriving in surprisingly cold climates. They can be found in a wide variety of habitats across the country, from forests to wetlands and rocky clearings. The fairy slipper is one of the most delicate, with a single pink and white flower that appears in spring in shaded coniferous woods across much of Canada. The striped coral root is unusual in having no leaves at all, instead getting its nutrients from fungi in the soil and producing tall reddish-brown stalks topped with striped blossoms. The small yellow lady slipper is widespread, growing in damp meadows and forest edges from coast to coast, while the ram's head lady slipper is one of Canada's rarest orchids, found only in scattered sites in Ontario, Quebec, and parts of Atlantic Canada. While there are many species of orchid in Canada, the country is home to only one single species of marsupial, and it's a more recent arrival. The Virginia opossum has been expanding its range northward over the past century. While it used to be restricted to the eastern parts of the United States, today it's found all the way north into southern Canada, and this journey has happened two different ways. In southern Ontario and Quebec, the expansion across the border is linked to both a warming climate and an increase in human population. Opossums are opportunistic omnivores, feeding on everything from insects and fruit to small animals and carrion. They also seek out garbage and pet food to feed, which helps explain why they have been so good at adapting to both rural and urban environments. The story on the West Coast is a little different. Around 1910, Virginia opossums were introduced to parts of California. As the West Coast tends to have a milder climate, they quickly spread north, making it to British Columbia by the 1950s. Now, they're a common sight around the city of Vancouver and have also been introduced to Hornby Island in the Strait of Georgia. There have been some credible sightings from Vancouver Island itself, leading to fears that the species might now have a foothold there as well. Canada has the longest coastline of any country in the world, being surrounded by three oceans. So it only stands to reason that there might be some surprising aquatic species found in its waters. Amazingly, Canada isn't home to just one or two, but five species of sea turtle, most of which only visit Canadian waters in the warmer months. The most frequently seen is the leatherback sea turtle. This is the largest turtle on earth reaching over 2 meters in length and weighing as much as 700 kilograms. Every summer and fall, leatherbacks migrate into Atlantic Canadian waters, especially off Nova Scotia and Newfoundland, where they feed on swarms of jellyfish. They also turn up on the west coast, though much less often. In fact, only 149 sightings have been documented in British Columbia since 1931, with the most recent record coming from July of this year, off the coast of Haida Gwaii. Loggerhead sea turtles and green sea turtles have also been recorded along both the Atlantic and Pacific coasts of Canada. And then there are the far rarer visitors to Canadian waters, 
the Hawksbill Sea Turtles, and Camps Ridley Sea Turtles. Both visit so infrequently that when they do make it to Canada, they often make the news. Perhaps one of the strangest sightings came in December of 2024. In the middle of winter, a Camps Ridley Sea Turtle, the rarest species of sea turtle in the world, washed ashore on the Magdalen Islands in Quebec, marking the first record of this critically endangered species in the region. Ocean temperatures were unusually warm at the time, and it's believed that this drew it northward. When it washed ashore, it had only recently died, and it's thought to have succumbed to hypothermia in the colder Gulf of St. Lawrence shortly after it arrived. Canada's vast coastline also supports nearly 30 species of sharks. While many of them are modest in size and seldom seen, some are rather unexpected. For example, the blue shark. Frequently seen in the Gulf of St. Lawrence and Bay of Fundy during summer and fall, this sleek hunter is likely the most common large shark in eastern Canadian waters, and sometimes they venture inland. In fact, blue sharks have occasionally been reported entering the lower St. Lawrence River, sometimes even reaching almost to Quebec City. Shortfin makos, which can exceed 4 meters in length, occasionally cruise the waters around Nova Scotia and the Grand Banks, drawn by deep water and abundant prey, while on the Pacific coast, the similarly sized salmon shark is commonly found, preferring the cold waters from California up to the Arctic. Of course, there's also the famous great white shark. Historical notes record encounters as far back as 1874, when a dory off Newfoundland was mauled, and tooth fragments embedded in its hull confirmed the presence of this massive species in Canadian waters. In recent years, sightings and strandings have become more frequent in Atlantic Canada, particularly in seal-rich zones like the St. Lawrence Estuary. Despite the number of species of shark found off the coasts of Canada, human encounters with sharks are exceedingly rare. According to the Canadian Shark Attack Registry, Documented injuries or attacks are few, and usually minimal in severity. In Atlantic Canada, there have been just four recorded cases of sharks attacking boats. Three involved great whites, as confirmed by the tooth fragments left in the hulls. Despite their fearsome reputation, sharks are far less of a risk to people than we are to them. And that's it for this week's video. What species live in your country that might surprise people? Let me know in the comments below. I need to say a special thanks to my patrons. Without their ongoing support, I wouldn't be able to make a video like this every week. If you want to support the channel, consider joining us on Patreon. The link is in the video description below. Or consider becoming a member here on YouTube by hitting the join button below the video. Members get access to exclusive perks like early video releases, special badges, and custom emojis to use in comments. Your support helps me to keep making the best content that I can. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.